Now, sky gazers in some parts of the country were treated to a dazzling display in the early hours of this morning when the Perseid meteor shower reached its peak. Well, many of you have been sending in your pictures from last night. People in the Midlands and the north of England had the best view with as many as 100 shooting stars every hour. Now, the shower is caused by the debris from a giant comet called Swift Tuttle. Each August, the Earth passes through the trail of dust and ice particles. They hit the atmosphere at around 37 miles a second, and that's what causes the streaks of light. All of which is very old news for Professor Monica <laughs> Grady because she's a Professor of Planetary and Space Science at the Open University, and you were watching Skyward last night. What did you make of it? Well, it was a bit disappointing where I was because there was a very thin veil of cloud. I did manage to see um, a couple of dozen over two hours, which was good. It's always good to see. It is one of those moments where you look up at the sky and you used to go, wow, because nothing can prepare you for yeah, it, really. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, they're gone like that. You, it, before you can say, oh, did you see that? Oh, it's gone. Mm. And it's just, just, you know... Uh, unforgettable once you've seen one. Because just remind us exactly how fast do they travel? Well, about 45,000 miles an hour. Gosh. Quite fast. And earlier, Simon did a, an impression of one that he's seen. Um, <laughs> I think <laughs> maybe we need to see, but actually hear well, it I again. Went, yes. Which was about right, wasn't yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. But they yeah. don't make a sound, do they? Or do if they? you're somewhere very, very quiet, you might hear a faint sizzle, but oh. that's about the best you can hope of... for. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a crack, more a crackling noise because they're they're evaporating. They're not burning. The uh, the point we're making earlier. This this happens every year. Mm -hmm. Just explain because it's all to do with the Earth's rotation yeah. and what it what it, it does. Well, what happens is the comet goes around the sun, okay, and the Earth goes around the sun. But the comet's going around the sun at one angle, and the Earth's going around at another angle. So they their orbits intersect, or, or the Earth goes through the dust cloud that has been made by this comet's tail, and it goes through every August. Now this happens with other comets as well. There's another one which happens in November, and another one in December. Um, the, this one in August gets the most publicity because lots of people are on holiday. They're staying up a bit later the weather's nicer, they're out, you know, they're on holiday somewhere darker. And it's particularly good this year because there's been no moon in no the moon. sky. Mm. So the skies have been very dark. And, and can we learn anything from it? I mean, scientifically, are the, is it useful? Oh, yeah, yeah. You can learn you need a pillow because actually yeah. you need a neck. Really sore after Yeah, best, an best really? way, best way is lying on the floor oh. or as oh. I was in a hammock. All right, with a glass of wine. Right. That's the best way. Um, <laughs> but, but you can learn by... Uh, what, you, what you can learn is you can learn what they're made from because sometimes they're slightly different colours. They might be orange or green as well as white. You can learn about the, um, the, the speed at which they're travelling and the number of them tells you how uh, big the dust cloud is and how much debris there is there. You get a can get an idea of how large the particle is, but that's going it a bit. And I also so. learned that there'll be a lot of youngsters out there watching last night who will think, I want to do what you're doing, Professor. It really does excite people, this, doesn't it? It, it does. I mean, space and the night sky, you know, the night sky is free for anybody. So, you know, you can go up out there and you can look and you see the stars. You can see these meteors any night for an hour, six an hour, any, any night if it's dark enough. And you can think, hey, you know, I want to know what all that's about. I want to know what, why are the stars there? Why are they twinkling? And just finally, I mean, is it over now, or can they see no. more? Can we see more tonight? You'll see more tonight um, if it's again if it's clear. If it you've usually got the goes down. Yeah, as long as True. it's as yes, long as it's not raining. Um, you can see them until about the fourteenth uh, oh, of right. August. Okay. Yeah. Now, you're going to be back on the BBC News a little later because there's something happening with Rosetta. I don't want to give anything away. No, but no. The well, 6 o'clock news will have something rather special. Well, as uh, uh, the, the comet, uh, another comet, 67P, Choryumov Gerasimenko. Sorry? Say that again. 67P, Choryumov Gerasimenko. These, mm -hmm. these comets are named after people. So, Swift Tuttle, Choryumov Gerasimenko. And uh, it's reaching the closest point to the sun today. And so, uh, that's what we've been talking about. Six o'clock. Nothing to do with the Perseids. Completely two comets, two different stories. God. So much going on in space. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Monica, it's great of you to come in. Press Monica Grady, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Now, as we've been hearing, around 300,000 teenagers in England